There is a Japanese proverb that says, a good sword is the one left in its scabbard. Independent Ukraine, with regard to the Navy, ignored this ancient wisdom. In one period, our government planned to completely abandon the Black Sea Fleet for the benefit of Russia. Afterwards, in 1997, the ships were eventually divided, but more than 80% of the fleet was taken by Russia, as were most of the buildings and the coastal infrastructure in Crimea. Therefore, when Russian special forces occupied the Ukrainian peninsula, we had nothing with which to oppose them. Awareness about the necessity to have a fleet appeared later when the presence of Ukrainian ships in Odessa stopped the incitement of separatism in the region. When a few units of the Marine Corps didn't allow terrorists to capture the sea territory in and around Mariupol, only then did the state's leadership realize the necessity to have a fleet and began to allocate budget funds for it. First of all, projects were completed to build anti-ship missile systems for coastal defense and small artillery armored boats for Ukrainian naval forces. Власне, Україні в першу чергу на сьогодні треба зосередитись на тому, щоб гарантувати захист свого узбережжя. Ukrainians should, first and foremost, focus on ensuring the protection of the coast and protecting commercial activities at sea. Therefore, we have to take the path of creating small but very effective combat ships. Today we have almost 70 ships and boats of various classes. We have our flagship Grigory Kropyatnikov. There are units in Mariupol, here in Odessa, Ismail. Different classes of ship perform tasks in the exclusive economic zone of Ukraine, in territorial sea as well as inland waters. As for the Ukrainian Navy, when the Russian Federation captivated most of our fleet in Crimea, the small minority that remained under the Ukrainian flag really consists primarily of small tonnage ships. Now Ukraine has one frigate that is, in fact, the flagship, Hetman Sahaidachny, one old corvette Vinitsa, one landing ship of medium tonnage called Yuri Oliferenko, and all the rest are boats. These include two old ships from the 1970s landing and missile. A further five are the same old artillery boats, actually six Guruza-class artillery boats, which were launched after the annexation of Crimea. Formally, Ukraine is the owner of two island-class patrol vessels, but they're in the USA. Therefore, the situation itself is showing the Ukrainian government that it's time to concentrate on the production of small tonnage vessels that will carry out tactical tasks to defend our marine territory. And the turn of ocean ships come when we are not at war. We have two options regarding development of our navy. The Mosquito Fleet, small ships that we have already successfully produced. Six Gruza-class artillery boats have already been passed to the fleet. They are equipped with light guns, sea-based anti-tank missile systems, machine guns and man pads. On September 9, 2016, during military training on the Hetman Sahaidachny frigate, it was noted that a Russian anti-submarine ship carried out the capture of the target and directs Ukrainian ships with their own onboard weapons. The small armored Ackerman and Berdyansk artillery boats left immediately to intercept the enemy. The ships took the enemy in half engagement. As a result of these maneuvers, the Russian ship was forced to retreat. This incident demonstrated the advantages of having a modern low-tonnage fleet. The construction of missile boats is promising. For example, the American island-class patrol vessels, they've given us two of them, but we cannot take them. There we can install Neptune rockets, as tests have already been done. Production is planned to start in 2019.
But this doesn't mean that Ukraine has abandoned the idea of having a large tonnage military fleet. The government has already approved the Corvette state program. According to the program, four ocean-going warships of the Volodymyr the Great class should be built by 2028. This hybrid of a corvette and frigate is already being built at the Black Sea shipyard in Mykolaiv. It should leave the stacks by 2022. The ships will be protected by the so-called stealth system and have missiles, torpedoes and powerful artillery systems. There is the Corvette project, which provides for the construction of Corvette-class ships, which are warships armed with missiles and torpedoes. An agreement was reached with France on the supply of anti-ship missiles, with a launch range of up to 200 miles. By the way, Sweden refused to cooperate with Ukraine in this context. However, most of the countries that from NATO are cooperating actively with Ukrainian naval departments. For example, the maritime border guards of Ukraine and Romania patrol the interstate border together. And Ukrainian naval forces taking part in negotiations with their Romanian, Bulgarian, Turkish and Georgian counterparts about the creation of multinational naval unit that will respond unanimously to any crisis situation on the Black Sea and to repel an aggressor who's decided to attack one of the countries that make up this association. The strongest NATO member country, the US, is also continually monitoring the armed conflict in Ukraine. These include possible threats from the sea. We do a lot of work with our foreign partners. We expect a very we're working a lot with our foreign partners. Right now we're expecting a visit by a very large group of specialists from the US Coast Guard who will come in early September. And we will see what can be done here in today's conditions of our situation, what can be rectified legislatively, that can be developed. We're working on some technical and logistical projects. Indeed, as long as the war with Russia continues, many countries are afraid of concluding a military agreement with Ukraine. Therefore, our government is developing plans to re-equip the fleet with the emphasis being on its own forces, with the involvement of Ukrainian producers. Moreover, in terms of the arms market, Ukraine has always been among the best in Europe. For example, even this year the Ukrainian Navy should receive Centaur-class fast assault craft, which in many features surpass those of Russian Raptor boats. These Centaur-class vessels are a modification of the already known Gruza M-class artillery boats and will be able to serve both in the Black and Azov seas. Actually, the Sea of Azov is causing a lot of concern among the military. In recent months, Russia has been actively militarizing the water area in violation of international maritime law. Ships entering or leaving Ukrainian ports are systematically checked by Russian border guards, which didn't used to happen. The Russians have established restrictions on the passage of ships in certain coordinates precisely on the path to the port of Mariupol. Moreover, Russian border guards are transferring boats of the Caspian flotilla to the Sea of Azov, six Schmel-class gunboats and seven small Cerna-type landing crafts. Of course, Ukraine and maritime border guards cannot ignore this. New challenges make it necessary to review the defense strategy in these regions. We have started to create a new structure that, for the first time in the era of independent Ukraine, will unite all naval units, maritime security units that we serve in the Sea of Azov, in the Black Sea and the Danube River. The decision was made to deploy this structure in Odessa, as it is our sea capital. Oleg Slobodan, advisor to the head of the State Border Service, assures that his department is tracking the militarization of the Sea of Azov by the Russians and is modeling various options on how the situation will unfold. In order to demonstrate strength and readiness to respond in the event of aggression, the Ukrainian military has also closed certain water areas of the Sea of Azov and Black Sea for the summer, where they held firing demonstrations. Both military experts and representatives of the Navy are advising the Ukrainian government to strengthen our 
presence in the Sea of Azov, protect coastal waters and sea routes to our ports by forces made up of at least border guards and possibly naval ships. Що стосується, наприклад, Азовської теми, так. As for the Sea of Azov, we regard the actions of the Russian Federation as one of the elements of the current hybrid war. They work on the edge of violation of international law. I am sure this is only temporary and this situation will be corrected. You will see yourselves. The representative of the President of Ukraine in the Autonomous Republic of Crimea, Boris Babin, has said that while the Sea of Azov is not delimited by a border and is, in fact, internal waters of joint use of Ukraine and the Russian Federation, our national interests can be defended de facto. In other words, for every provocation by the Russians, it is necessary to give an adequate answer, simply to demonstrate the intention of ousting Russian boats from the Ukrainian coast, and Ukrainian border guards will handle this task. We must understand that we are purely a law enforcement body. However, we are considering arming our ships. For example, all our ships and boats on the Sea of Azov have been adequately equipped so that they can fight back properly. We can say that Russia is actively trying to isolate Ukraine from the seas, ousting it from the exclusive maritime economic zone, and violating its rights in the field of international maritime trade. And we can stop this only one way, by demonstrating, on the one hand, the readiness to defend our interests in international courts and, on the other hand, actively restoring the effective naval component of our country's defense. And this component is prescribed in the naval doctrine of Ukraine. What is our naval doctrine? To build small ships, a Mosquito fleet, by 2020. It is planned to build 18 Gurza M-class artillery boats, 8 Centaur-class fast assault craft, 3 to 4 land gun boats, and to complete the Volodymyr the Great Corvette. Nevertheless, there are results. The new draft of the naval doctrine has already been developed by the Institute for Strategic Studies and is being discussed in the Cabinet of Ministers of Ukraine. It is likely that those initiatives of the government that are being voiced now for the building of corvettes, for the modernization of ports and for the arrival of foreign merchant fleets in our markets will all be part of the new naval doctrine of Ukraine. But that is a topic for the next program. In the meantime, remember that each phenomenon has its pro and cons, its pro and contra.